I am well aware that that intro was too long for YouTube, but I loved that little bit of music and I was throwing some clips together and I thought, yeah, I'll just stick it in and it'll hopefully work. But in today's video, I want to talk actually about my own training and just to highlight actually some of the mistakes and problems that people make. Um, so yeah, what you'll see here is a bit of my lower body sort of stroke leg workout. Now generally I'll do a full body workout. I like full bodies. They're simple, easy, tick all the boxes. You can do a day on, day off. It's a nice way to train. Another way I'll train is my upper lowers. I love doing like upper body stuff, like functional bodybuilding, um, meets prehabby, rehabby movement stuff. And I'll have a lower body day. Now I love old school sort of powerlifting, strengthy squats, deadlifts, bit of single leg stuff, split squats. I love that style of training, bit of time under tension in there, um, bit of just heavy, heavy stuff. So that was my bread and butter for years. Now more recently, because I've picked up the old jiu-jitsu niggle and hamstring was never great, left hip sort of has a wee bit of uh, uh, sort of lacking a bit of internal rotation. So I'm in the middle of ironing that out. So I thought this would be quite interesting for people because as a coach, I want people generally to squat, deadlift, uh, you know, push, pull, etc., etc. But not everyone can do it. And I'm a good example of this. So although I've squatted for 20, 25 years, at the minute, actually, squatting is not great for me. Um, again, because of my hip and my hamstring. So I can squat, but I don't really enjoy it because I just feel a wee bit out of whack. So I've taken that out. Now, Squatting is seen as a basic exercise that you need, but on the other side of that, it's also still too complex for where I'm at. So I've had to dissect my squat down um, and say, well, okay, let's look at the ankles, let's look at the knee, let's see what this hamstring's doing, let's look at this internal rotation of this of the left hip, let's check out the back. And so this is a big part of um, training. It's not just what do I want to do, it's can I actually do it and can I actually do it long term without it biting me in the arse because just because I can do it maybe today or tomorrow or next week doesn't mean that it's it's not going to actually cause more problems so um, some exercises can be like tooth decay where you think it's okay at the time and then six months down the line you go actually I shouldn't have been doing it that way whether my technique was off or did I have the prerequisites for that move so I thought it'd be quite interesting for people to see my training where although I say I can squat and I can deadlift I don't really enjoy my squatting and deadlift in the minute because I just feel a wee bit out of whack so I'm breaking down the good basic exercises from I suppose movements and muscles right down to the joint and saying well what is the joint doing is it okay and then when the joint's good i'll rebuild it back up so there's this constant ebb and flow between what do i want to do and can i actually do it and again this is a big problem with people getting exercises or some of the you know seeing some of the youtube stuff and going all right okay it's it's kettlebell snatches and the burpees and the double unders and the barbell and it's like that's okay but can you actually do those exercises can you do them well do you have the prerequisites to do those exercises and in a lot of cases people actually don't so um, I just thought it'd be good for people to see that even though I am experienced and have a lot of muscle memory in those movements that I really enjoy I'm taking a step back to say set the ego aside here I'm gonna do the unsexy workouts the non Instagram workouts and tackle the weak links that are maybe holding back some of my big stuff. So um, I just thought I'd put a little bit of a video together to today on that because I've had man flu for a week. Um, not the Rona, just man flu and it was a bit bunged up and I haven't actually got training loads. But uh, yeah, my lower body now is like basically a leg day with no legs in it. So I start off with uh, cars. This is controlled articular rotations and it's basically a bit of body tension and you're working a targeted joint through a full range of abduction, adduction, internal, external rotation, etc., etc. 
And then from there I add in peels and reels and there's a lot of acronyms there but basically you're doing a, a bit of a stretch then you're activating long tissue and then you're activating short tissue and this is how you do proper mobility training. You know most people's mobility training is a bit of a stretch of the leg and a foam rolly IT band or whatever it is and, um, but it's not actually what you're meant to do. So the majority of my leg work at the minute is actually my cars. Uh, pails and reels and unilateral sort of stuff so because my back is just a wee bit out of whack and my left hips a bit out of whack I'm not really doing a lot of squatty deadlift start sort of stuff I'll do some sumo deadlift sometimes but generally what I'm working on is the weaknesses so um, it just shows you that even though I've trained a long time you know I am in my 40s now I'm a bit broken Jiu-Jitsu, I thought, would have turned me into this fluid Bruce Lee, and it didn't really. It just, um, it just broke me a wee bit. So now we're on, we're on the rebuild. So um, yeah, bit of an insight. So yes, it's good to do the big basics, but can you do the big basics? And are the big basics actually too complex for where you are in this uh, at this moment? So bit of food for thought. Catch you on the next one.